Good morning. Commissioners, Chief Choi, Mr. Sibley, Madam Secretary, Assistant Inspector General, Ms. Yu, Mr. City Attorney Carlos De La Guerra, and members of the public, today is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024, it's 9.30 a.m. This is the regular meeting of the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Good morning. Please let the record reflect Commissioner Southers, Shields, Briggs, Calancha, and Garcia are present. And we have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. We welcome everyone attending this morning. The Police Commission is committed to ensuring equal access to its meetings. It is requested that individuals who require the services of a translator contact the Board Secretary no later than the day preceding the meeting. Whenever possible, a translator will be provided. Sign language interpreters, assisted listening devices, or other auxiliary aids and or services may be provided upon request. To ensure availability, you are advised to make your request at least 72 hours prior to the meeting you wish to attend. All public comment will be heard during item number two on the agenda. We will dedicate a total of 45 minutes to public comment. Members of the public will have one minute per agenda item for a maximum of two minutes total. At the request of the speaker, the speaker will be given one additional minute for general public comment for a maximum of three minutes total. Members of the public who participate in public comment are reminded that they can speak to any items on the agenda or a matter within the jurisdiction of the Board of Police Commissioners. Public comment is your opportunity to address the Board, so you are free to express your opinion on matters before the Board and to generally express when you disagree with other opinions expressed. However, directing your comments to other individuals who have spoken or attacking others who have expressed their opinions shall be deemed off topic and your public comment period will be concluded. Members of the public, if you choose to participate in the public comment portion of the agenda, you can participate in this meeting several ways outlined on the agenda. Message for those attending the meeting in person. These meetings are regular meetings between the board, the department, and key stakeholders. Meetings of the Board of Police Commissioners are open to the public. The state's Ralph M. Brown Act affords the public the opportunity to be present at the meetings, hear the presentations and dialogue in real time, and provide feedback via the public comment period. During these meetings, there is a need for the board to carry out public business expeditiously without delays or disruptions. Members of the audience shall not engage in any conduct which causes an actual disruption of the meeting. Those attending in person are reminded that disruptive behavior will be cause for removal. If you disrupt this meeting, you will be provided with only one warning to cease disruptive behavior. If you fail to cease such behavior, you will be removed from the meeting. While in the boardroom, members of the audience must be seated. Standing is not permitted. At this time, we'll move to item number one, the report of the Chief of Police, Chief Choi. Uh, good morning, President Southers, Vice President Shields, uh, Commissioners, Assistant Inspector General Yu, City Attorney Delegate, Mr. Sibley. Uh, I'm going to start uh, by saying that we had no officer involved shootings for this week for this reporting period. Um, currently, we stand year to date at 12 officer involved shootings versus eight last year, or plus four. Um, we've had three fatalities as a result of those officer involved shootings this year versus five fatalities last year. I'm gonna move on to the protests that we had in front of the Shrine on Sunday. So on May 12th, Pomona College hosted a, its graduation ceremony at the Shrine Auditorium due to a protest encampment erected on their campus. Uh, the decision to relocate, relocate the ceremony aimed to prevent disruption uh, by the protesters. Upon learning of this relocation of the ceremony, protesters took to social media to call for a shutdown of the ceremony, <laughs> which was scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. and conclude at 8.30 p.m. on Sunday. The planned protest was set to commence at 3.30 p.m. At approximately 4 p.m., a group of around 50 protesters blocked the entrance to the Shrine Auditorium, impeding people from entering the venue. Officers on site established a pathway within the protesters to facilitate the entry of graduates and their guests safely. The protest grew to brought approximately 100 protesters. As, the, as this uh, event continued, one of the subjects, Daniel Marui, Armed, armed himself with a wooden sign, pushed it into officers, resulting in a non-categorical use of force. An officer needs help call was generated as the protest group surrounded officers, attempting to prevent Mari's arrest. Additional officers responded, forming a skirmish line to restore order. Marari was arrested subsequently and then was taken into custody and subsequently arrested without further incident. He was booked for 69 PC, resisting an executive officer in the performance of their duties. 
One officer sustained a laceration to their knee. No other community members were injured. The investigation re revealed that this suspect had been previously arrested during a protest at UCLA one week prior. He was not affiliated with USC or UCLA as a student. Uh, another incident where an officer was injured on May 6th at 11.30 p.m., Northeast Uniform Patrol officers were completing a vehicle impound in the area of Stadium Way and Lilac Terrace when their patrol vehicle was struck by a DUI driver. Both officers were transported to the hospital for complaint of pain injuries. They are both treated and released. Both are recovering now and expected, recovering at home and expected to make a full recovery. And the driver of the vehicle was arrested for felony DUI. Moving on to our crime picture, um, year to date, ending 5-11-2024, violent crime is up 0.4%. Property crime is down 3.6%, and overall part one crime is down 2.7%. Our violent crime arrests are up 0.4%, and our overall part one crime arrests are up 5.8%. Uh, individually in our violent crime categories, we, we are still up in homicides year over year. So compared to 2023, the city has seen a year-to-date increase of 5.8% or plus six homicides. Uh, compared to 2022, the city has seen a decrease of minus 26 or a decrease of 19.3% in homicides. Our gang-related homicides are down significantly. They're down 39.7% compared to 2023 and down 50.7% compared to 2022. Uh, however, uh, Operation South Bureau in 2024 accounts for the majority of our gang-related homicides at 16 of them, or 45.7% of all gang-related homicides. Looking at our victim shooting, uh, victim shot, citywide victim shot are down 33, or minus 7.7%, uh, and they're down 105, or minus 21.1%, compared to 2022. We're still struggling with our, our robberies. Uh, so total robberies have seen an increase over the past six weeks, rising from 8.2% back up to 12.6%. Um, rob robberies involving firearms, again, which is where we maintain a focus, uh, have decreased down to negative 0.4% or minus three robberies compared to 2023. And robberies with firearms constitute about 24.9% or 25% of our total robberies year to date. Uh, we're seeing our, our robberies still um, continue primarily on the street and parkways, which is about uh, 1,369 of those robberies in 2024. This premise type, it's, it's up. It's an increase of 3.4% compared to that premise type last year. But we're seeing a significant increase in um, small businesses, restaurants, mini marts, clothing stores, liquor stores, gas stations, um, small department stores. We've seen they account for about 843 robberies, and this, this type of premise is up 36.9% in 2024 compared to 2023. Regarding our property crime, uh, burglaries are up 1% from 2023 uh, and 2.2% 2 .2 from 2022. Year to date, uh, 2024 has seen a 3.9% increase in our commercial burglaries, now this is opposite from what I previously reported where um, uh, residential burglaries were up and commercial burglaries are down. We've seen a, a switch in that recently. Our commercial burglaries are up 3.9% compared to 2023. Commercial burglaries constitute 45.6% of total burglaries year to date. With significant increases in Central Bureau um, and by South Bureau. Central Bureau shows an increase, an overall increase of 20.7% in commercial burglaries in South Bureau uh, shows at 18.9 percent compared to 2023. Uh, conversely, year-to-date residential burglaries have decreased by 1.3 percent or 38 burglaries from 2023, but an increase by 5.9 percent from 2022. And res residential burglaries account for 54.4 percent of our total burglaries year-to-date. Uh, West Bureau stands as the only exception with a 0.7 percent increase in 2024 compared to 2023. And really Wilshire and Hollywood divisions really drive this increase with 39 and 27 additional residential burglaries respectively. Motor vehicle thefts are up 6.3% compared to 2023. And compared to 2022, motor vehicle thefts are down 3.9% in 2024. Where we're seeing this increase 
is in Operations Valley Bureau, where overall increase of 29.3% or 608 more motor vehicle thefts this year than compared to last. And focusing uh, more narrowly or more detailed, North Hollywood Division has an increase of 39% or 134 more, more um, thefts or motor vehicle thefts. And this is the largest numerical increase in the city. Foothill Division has the largest percentage increase in the city of 51.6% or plus 131 motor vehicle thefts. And again, the top stolen vehicles continue to be our Kias, Chevrolets, and Hyundais. Our personnel strength as of May 13th, we've seen a, a slight dip. Um, for our sworn personnel, we're at 8,821. That's a loss of 31 sworn personnel from pre my previous report. And our civilian personnel staffing has dropped to 26 or 2,633, which is a loss of seven civilians from our my previous report. And our reserve officers remain at 443. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. Now we'll move on to comments or questions from the commission. I'll start with Commissioner Calanche. Thank you. Commissioner Briggs. Good morning, Chief. Um, this morning it was reported that um, we've had two more stabbing incidents uh, with respect to Metro, um, what can you tell us and assure the citizens who are using Metro that they will be safe? Because at present, uh, it doesn't appear that we have enough resources deployed to keep citizens safe who are using uh, that service. Well, let, me, let me just start by saying both those incidents you're referring to, one happened in the city of Glendale and the other one happened in uh, LA County, so the sheriffs handled those. Um, the first one in Glendale was, um, was a, uh, a group of juveniles uh, that got in an argument on a bus. Uh, the argument came off the bus onto the streets um, where an individual was stabbed. Two of those suspects are in custody. I don't have much more detail on that since we didn't investigate that. And then the second one was a, a female adult that was stabbed. Um, we don't have a lot of detail on that. Um, it was, it was regarding some type of uh, argument or discussion over some marijuana, but I don't, I don't have any further details on that and suspect. That happened on an elevator within the platform off the 105 um, and the Vermont area, Crenshaw area. Uh, that suspect got on the train and then fled westbound on that train from there. Um, I will say that we are looking in, uh, at a variety of ways that we can help um, our partners at MTA and the other agencies that are involved in, in policing this, the trains and the buses on how to better secure the lines um, from this type of behavior, uh, whether we need to be in our vehicles or actually riding the lines, which is gonna have better coverage and more coverage. Um, do we need to increase ambassadors or security guards? These are all discussions that we're having with MTA, uh, as well as uh, myself and Sheriff Luna are talking. Um, so this is an ongoing process. There, you know, There's other, discussions about potentially, uh, how, how do we keep weapons off? Do we need additional security at the gates? Uh, but these are all ongoing discussions uh, that we need to keep uh, working with MTA and our other law enforcement partners on making these uh, transportation methods much safer for, for our ridership. Thank you, Chief. Chief, if I could follow up on that question, is there a task force or a group that's regularly meeting of these interagencies that are working together to address this problem? Well, the MTA group, um, law enforcement group, meet regularly. So, But if you're asking because of these recent, if a special task force has been developed, I don't believe so. Thank you. Yeah. Vice President Shields. Thank you, President Southers, and thank you, thank you Chief, for the report. Um, a couple of questions, one regarding um, the uh, protests at graduations, and given that we're still kind of in graduation season, how um, how well are, is the department kept informed by neighboring universities of location changes, just to ensure that the department will have um, the ability to uh, respond if there's a specific need? So the, the colleges and universities within the city of Los Angeles, we have great relationships and we have liaisons with each of those. So we are always kept uh, informed and up to, up to date on um, things that are happening on campus. Uh, this particular one, Pomona College, we, LAPD specifically doesn't have a, um, a liaison or an ongoing um, 
ongoing contact uh, with this university. In fact, this was, from my understanding now, kind of a last minute change. Even some of the parents were not made aware of this change until, of the students were not made aware of change until the, that morning. Uh, but having said that, uh, once we got word, um, we were, you know, we don't get immediately involved. We, you know, people are allowed to protest. We, we monitored it for a while until it became disruptive and that's when we stepped in to facilitate the uh, pathway for those attending the graduation to go in. And then when it became an unlawful assembly and officers uh, were getting pushed and, and hurt, that's when we dispersed the group. Thank you, and I understand that Pomona is an outside kind of uh, university. If there's any p potential outreach to the universities to let them know that if they come into the city, they need to make you aware. I don't know if it's a, a campaign uh, to, to make sure that, that you're not caught off guard and the department's not caught off guard by, um, by such an event. Um, I echo your sentiments about the officers who were struck by the DUI driver, and I hope that they have a speedy recovery. You know, we've been holding our community meetings in search of the next police chief, and one of the uh, kind of a recurring theme is um, traffic enforcement and the and at least what appears to be uh, not a robust amount of uh, traffic enforcement. Um, have you seen any um, increases, decreases in that regard? And given you know the number of like DUIs and really fatalities involving vehicles, um, is there an, an increase to uh, make the streets safer? Yes, we've we've seen an increase in our pedestrian related related fatal, vehicle versus pedestrian fatalities, um, and a significant portion of those ha the ones that we uh, that are not hit and runs the ones that we actually arrest or have been under the influence of alcohol or other things. Um, I think you've seen, you, we've been seeing the emails each week more robustly on all these DUI checkpoints. So there's an active effort to address this issue by our traffic group. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, when you talked about personnel strength, it's, it's disappointing to see it going in the uh, negative direction. Um, and we had heard previously that there had been record applications uh, received by the department. How quickly are these applications being processed? Um, how long are officers typically having to wait or applicants having to wait? And is there anything that we can do to speed up that process? So we've, we've been working on that, that um, challenge uh, for quite some time. We're trying to find uh, work with personnel department to find efficiencies in the background process um, in, in sometimes when a candidate gets a deferral, do they really need to be deferred or can they take the, the retest right away? Those are issues that are ongoing conversations. Um, I do have a meeting coming up with personnel department uh, next week to discuss those things further. Um, I will tell you that this drop happened, it really happens to be a timing issue because we haven't had another class graduate. Typically what you see is these numbers come every pay period, so every two weeks. So if there's a gap where you have an attrition number that's calculated and you don't have an incoming class, you're gonna see this dip, but the next class you'll see it go back up to, uh, next graduating class you'll see this number go back up to what it was in my prior report. Um, so I just wanna make sure we're, we understand we're not seeing a, a, a precipitous drop. This is not, we're gonna see classes come out and graduate. Thank you, Chief. And if there's anything that we can do to help um, with the um, processing of applications, um, anything that, uh, if there's any proposals that you have on helping to expedite that process, um, I, I would be very interested in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Shields. Commissioner Garcia. Thank you, Chief. Um, less of a question, more of a comment really related to personnel. I've been able to participate in some of the graduations recently and really just want to echo what you were just saying. Like we do have plenty of folks who have been applying, who have been going through um, the training and graduating. Uh, and during the graduation, we actually have time to uh, check in and have a real quick conversation with each one of the graduates. And it's um, really uh, wonderful to hear sort of the passion and the reasons why they uh, joined the department and a lot of um, it's a diverse group of folks and a lot of folks who are uh, of the community from the community and who have uh, unique experiences and so happy to have seen that um, and uh, one of the things I also heard recently is from an outside researcher looking doing some projects with law enforcement and, and with the city 
on the gang intervention side is how young officers are much more aware of some of the alternative uh, response uh, systems and, and how they're uh, very supportive of that. So um, I'm looking forward to see when that report is released and what else is in there, but uh, also excited to see that our younger officers are, uh, again, more diverse and more informed and more aware of some of the nuances of communities. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to item number two, public comment. Madam Secretary, please call the first speaker. The first speaker, Patricia Mendoza. On all items. Um, <clears throat> good morning, commissioners, and good morning, Chief Police Choi. Um, I wanted to share that last week I went to the Rampart Police Station and uh, nobody was able to help me with the police report. I've already lost two disability checks that are mailed to my home, to my home address. And just yesterday, I figured who might be stealing them with the supervisor of the SSI located in downtown on 8th Street. It's someone at the post office, not the one in Alameda and Cesar Chavez. Is where they get the mail, I think, somewhere on Slauson and Gage. And then it comes to Alameda and it gets divided. Um, also, I wanted to share that um, I don't think we should be responsible for so much wrongdoing and negligence and a lot of people that have mental problems that have been coming from different cities and countries. We have enough problems, and it's important that the mayor knows she needs to find out where these people come from because you are aware when our city was mayor, he filed a lawsuit with New York, and he got lots of money. And uh, what happened to that money? And I don't think it's fair that people are being stabbed and killed. At the end of the day, we pay for the broken plates. We, the taxpayer, pay for the victims of crime program and all these funds. Um, Mr. Choi, everybody in the community are talking about the president of El Salvador should come here and help us clean this mess. You know, it's very sad. It's very sad, the past history, the braceros, they were asked to come to Mexico to help with the railroads for the trains to function. They died, they never got paid. And here you go to downtown, it stinks, it smells, there's poop of animals, of humans. I don't know how the city allows all these restaurants to be open. When is there gonna be a good change, a good cause? I don't like the way the mayor is making choices, especially before she, she won. Why would she be doing these commercials with the Scientology? They're nothing good for the community. So I would like to know, with all due respect, Mr. Choi, someone can help me with my police report. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Next, we Thank have you. Betty Lane. Good morning. Good morning. What items would you like to speak on? Chief's report, agenda items, public comment, please. Okay, three minutes. Okay, first again, I always appreciate the chief's report. Thank you very much. Um, sad to know you're already on drop, but you totally deserve it. Uh, agenda items 3B and 3C, I support. And public comment um, worth repeating that in there should be an in-depth background check when choosing for a new permanent chief. I hope every all the mothers had a great Mother's Day and everybody stay safe and healthy. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. The next speaker, Jonathan Foster. Hello, Jonathan Foster. I hope this works. I move on to Philip. I would just like to apologize to people listening for hearing some sexist comments earlier with that speech. So I, I guess, you know, that's how you feel. I thought uh, lipstick, eyeliner, mascara, shiny high heels, fingernail polish was also kind of sexist. So 
A lot of the reason I came down here was about Jameel Shaw Jr. being shot in the face in Special Order 40 and the lie that the LAPD is bringing crime down. And I wonder how did he get shot then? That kind of concept, it goes up and down and up and down. So it's, you know, but I know that some good things are being attempted. The second reason I came down here was to protect the officers, which really protects the people. This still hasn't been done. There's a few things I've suggested for five straight years that I haven't seen anything change. And one of the problems is that we're $34 trillion in debt. I'm hearing about the deficit. It's going to be $300 million or something like that. And one thing that doesn't get spoken about is the foster care system, my last name, which is called the Child Protective Services. It's hurting drastically. It makes me very sad. There were four officers killed. I, I was pretty upset about that. And I'm hearing about a Ricardo Mendez in Philadelphia PD who shot four times. His daughter said that she is scared because things are getting worse. That's what she said in her eulogy to her dad. I wanted to mention a Marine, Carlos Segovia Lopez, shot in 2016. He was 21 years old, shot by some dirt bags and they gave 100 years to one guy and 50 years to the other dirt bag that shot Carlos Segovia Lopez. He was a 21 year old Marine and he, he was the leader of like all the people that he was around. They all loved him. <clears throat> uh, my nephew is a MP. He, he got out with his back hurt. So I talked about the Latino stuff and everything. And one of the things I want to talk about this is um, this Catholic church is that many of these people that got raped were Latinos. And people think I don't like Latinos. And I'm like, well, why would I be looking out for them? I mean, I, I, mean, the, I, I can't understand how that church even exists. It raped one boy. I would just destroy it. You know, Jesus is coming back. With, with a big can of whoop ass for sure. And I'm telling you, he's gonna use it. One of the things though I'm upset about too, when I talked about that, that it was the ADL, I did fundraising for the ADL. But I wanted to also point out that Eric, Eric Garcetti is a Mexican Jew. Christopher Columbus is a Portuguese Jew. Ocasio Cortez is a Cuban Jew. Anybody know that? It's, it's very secret how it works. Next, we have caller ending 1264. Hello? Hi, what items would you like to speak on? All items. Okay, three minutes. Oh, um, Pete Choi and the commissioners. Um, over here in the Foothill Division, in my area, um, we are having problems with I, what I suspect to be a cartel activity here um, by the church. Um, we have a saint that is a saint of the cartel that has been built by the cartels, I believe. I don't think the church paid for it. Um, we have a lot of um, illegal sales going on along the church, around the church. I've had the officers come out here. This is a prohibited vending area. They're vending in front of uh, first responder areas, uh, would, would be blocking the fire department or any paramedics from actually doing their job if they had to. Um, and uh, just walking by the other day, I, I noticed um, with three dots. And to me, that is like a mafia type of uh, stand. It's 13. I believe the Roman numeral X is 13. And then you have the three dots, which mean third, which three means 13. And that is a uh, mafia type um, sig significance that it has to that um, graffiti that is on all the poles. And this is in the residential area, mind you. Um, the whole lawlessness is just absolutely um, just being able to continue. And, and how can we feel safe? we only expect to be attacked and you also have uh, an rv uh having open drug sales right across the street from the church which is a school also and um people are driving up going there coming in and out um riding their bikes with tattoos on their face and oh how do you know they're a gang member 
<laughs> that's what they tell me. Uh, well, I mean, if he has tattoos on his face, obviously something's wrong or he's, I don't know what, what, what is on his face or why he has tattoos on his face, but it doesn't, it, it, it obviously he's not from the community. So I know that. Um, so obviously we, we don't have a community anymore because we're, we're, our, our whole streets and sidewalks are allowed to be taken over. Um, that does not make us safe. Um, I could have been stabbed in the neck when my phone got stolen. I, I didn't know that. I, I mean, I, I considered, I felt safe in my community before, but now I do not. And, and that's not good. Um, obviously the church has their rules and selling items in front of the church is not part of the religion. That is, that is money exchanging, you know, and that is against the religion. So I, I don't understand why this continues to do. The next speaker, please, the Red Chief Hunt. Chief Troy, it seems like you're going in the wrong, wrong direction. The train has wrecked again. Uh, I told you on 54th in Western, uh, the train has wrecked, and the train is still wrecked. Um, I'm looking at, I found two 211 reports, and only one was turned in. Why was that, if you're a good police officer or you're a good chief? Um, I think, number one, this is two. Here, here go the second one. They came, knocked at my door, and they said, we only got one report. That's because the officer didn't turn in the other report. That's another 211 that you add to your statistics. N n n number three is, why don't you go out in the community and, 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 and investigate yourself? I, I, I don't get you, man. If I wanted to be the chief of police and I know there was a whole bunch of problems going around in my community and you hear these people talking about it and stuff like that, you haven't went out there to see what was going on. Neither has the inspector general. I'm really disappointed in the president. Have you been out there to 54th and Western? You guys talk about cleaning up the community and that you guys are going to do all this and you guys all that, but nothing ever gets done, and that's from... Uh, the chief level. See, chief, when people come down here, they come down here to spend their time to, to have you correct the problem. But have you correct the problem yet? No. And this is why, you know, you'd be just like the other chiefs of police, like, like Beckham becoming a train wreck, a fucking disaster down here, because you can't really correct the problems. And you saying this is policy and procedure and all this other stuff. I'm listening to you, what you said. Do you say that the robbery is up, the 211s is up? You know why? Because we don't have enough responsible people out there taking the complaints and doing it and cleaning up the streets. You say that you want the people to walk the beat and you you you, you want you want the people to go out there and do community based policing, but there's no there's no community based policing. My whole neighborhood wants to file a, a gang report against you to say that, you, that, 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 that we don't want you as chief of police because you're not getting the job done. Vice President Shields, I need to take you out to lunch. I hear a lot of good things about you, but it takes more than one person to correct the whole system. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, and, and the village is not being taken care of because we're still having these same old problems that we're having. And I like to file extensive complaints against the 77th Division because... Uh, not turning in the reports and stuff like that, you know. That's lollygagging on the job. I was up there at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you have two police officers just doing nothing, but they're lollygagging. You know, this is what LAPD is known for, lollygagging. Mr. Shields, I want to put you on my calendar as soon as possible. Chief, you need to go out and... and, and... Thank you. Next, we have Andrew Gravener. Andrew Gravener, you're on. All items. Two minutes. All right, starting off with the chief's report. The chief's report should be limited to three minutes at every meeting. If the chief's report exceeds three minutes, we should be able to match the amount of time the chief takes. Regardless of how long the chief takes, we should be able to, um, every, everyone should be able to speak. Um, no one should be cut off. You you have a you work for what like two hours a week on this. You have time to hear from everyone. Um, 
Let's see, we've got the consent agenda. Let's see, on today's consent agenda, we've got a something, re we've got a bunch of donations, of course, because we, it's your backdoor way of funneling more money to the LAPD with little public scrutiny. We have A, $20,000 for surveillance. Um, B, that's um, $10,000 for $9,400 for a boat, SWAT boat. Um, we have C, we have $20,000 for morale and well being in the North Hollywood division. Um, nothing says morale and well being like $20,000. D, $500 for the LAPD choir. Why does the LAPD have a choir? Like, what, what purpose does that serve um, besides just wasting taxpayer money? We have E, more dogs for the police um, that are, um, you know, used to... It's animal abuse, of course, dog, dogs don't... Pops. Um, does, does, do those dogs come from the, from the kennel named after Hitler's bunker? Because you get a lot of them, those, you get a lot of dogs from those. Uh, let's see, I'm running out of time. Um, let's see, for anything else of note from the consent agenda. Yeah, there's just so many donations. I don't even have time to speak about all of them. Um, more vacations for the, for the police chief. Um, $633 to go to Sacramento. Um, we have, looks like you seized $200,000 in money. Is that is that just pure cash you just seized um, from civilians? Um, talk about that. Um, yeah, but the, as the police are continuing to go harass, uh, go assault people at pro-Palestinian protests, uh, college campuses, um, and the you know the president of this commission, Errol Southers, is head of is there's a lot of public safety at USC um, in working for them. Errol Southers needs to go. He's responsible for a lot. The next speaker, please, Michelle. I thought you people learned a lesson several years ago when you got in a lot of trouble for hurting and harming protesters who were doing nothing wrong. These protesters at these colleges are protesting a genocide that is happening with our tax dollars. Our money is going there to murder and massacre a whole civilization of people. These are young people who are concerned and who are expressing their, their freedom of expression. And of course, I mean, I was a college professor myself. Colleges and college administrations do not give a flying shit for students. They only care about themselves and their own survival. That's it. Period. I saw it for 40 years. So when they call you in, they are not asking you to do something good for their students. They are asking you to enforce their feelings about their students and to stop their students from expressing themselves, which is their constitutional right. If you participate in that, you will besmirch your already horribly besmirched reputation even more. There are already trials going on this week where you, the LAPD, and I put you commissioners in with them because you're part of it, are on trial. And it's all about people who are expressing their free expression of thought and, and not doing anything violent at all. The arrests at USC should never have happened, never. 
And, you know, at any protest, the best police are the ones who stay away. So my advice to you is stay away. You want to recruit more people? I, I, you know, I probably should encourage you to be smirch your reputation at the LAPD even worse. Go ahead, do it. But I don't want that to happen. I don't want these students harmed. I want them to be able to express themselves and to be able to have an impact on our government, which is their constitutional right. And they are leading this country, not you people. So stop it. Next, we have Philip Tabby. All items, please. Okay, three minutes. April 10th, 1962. The 35th President of the United States of America, John F. Kennedy, made Proclamation 3466, Police Week and Peace Officers Memorial Day. President Kennedy called upon the people of the United States, and I quote, and upon all patriotic, civil, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 13th through the 19th, 1962, as Police Week with appropriate ceremonies in which all of our people may join in commemorating police officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in so doing have established themselves an inviolable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and securities of all citizens. President Kennedy continues calling upon the people of the United States to observe Monday, May 14th, 1962, as Peace Officers Memorial Day to honor those peace officers who, through their courageous deeds, have lost their lives or have become disabled in the performance of duty. Commission, it's 2024, and it's National Police Week. Why do we not see the ceremonies? Why is this commission silent as our officers sit at the mercy of failing policies? The way things are ran today go against the fabric it's sewn upon. The way this department is run is the very reason why we are seeing officers leaving the department in droves, either retiring early or finding other jobs with other departments. You can't even keep all of your recruits because they are leaving as well. You talk about how many graduated, but how many have you retained? I bet you will never answer that question. Per my sources, they either leave prior to graduation, during probation, or shortly after probation and get a job with another agency. The troops are saying it's the fault of management that allowed politics to determine the direction of this department. I also found out vaccine mandate 187-134 is set to be rescinded, but no one will sign the email. What's going on, Dom? Rescind 187-134 immediately, per we the people. Also, fire Liz Rhodes. God bless the LAPD. Yield the rest of my time. The next speaker, Adam Smith. Good morning. Um, my name's Adam from LA CANS Human and Civil Rights Committee. Um, a few weeks ago when I left this meeting, maybe a month ago, I um, was walking down First Street and saw this uh, LA police car seemingly chasing this dude around uh, the block onto um, Los Angeles Street, I think. And so I followed the car to see what was happening and these two, you know, out of shape, fucking violent humps of, of humans jumped out of their car and chased this dude, got him up against the wall, pepper sprayed him, uh, like right in his face. And one of them actually pepper sprayed themselves in the process. This was um, two senior lead officers, Al Flores and Frank Martinez. And I bring this up, I bring this up not because I think that the uh, citizen's voice in police affairs, the so-called oversight body of the uh, most murderous police department 
in the country is going to you know, whatever do anything about that. But I bring it up because, as you might know, Frank Martinez on March 1st, 2015, uh, murdered a black immigrant houseless person named Charlie Africa in his tent. And so back then, Frank was just an officer in Central Division. But following the murder of, of uh, Charlie Africa, he was promoted into the community policing program, the senior lead program. So the senior lead program is like when you, when there's like a city event, like um, KDL, uh, Kevin DeLeon and the mayor were in Little Tokyo a couple of months ago. And, and I think some of these folks were there. And who else is there? It's these senior lead officers, right? The people that they put in charge of going out and talking to community. So it's sick that Martinez promoted into this so-called community policing program are still out there brutalizing but like, can you think of any other neighborhood in LA where an LAPD officer could murder somebody and not only be promoted, but still patrolling and brutalizing people in that neighborhood other than Skid Row? I don't know, Officer White's kind of there too, so I don't know. Like, but... Knowing that, you know, I don't know, yeah, I mean, where, where else would that happen? Why would, why would Frank Martinez want to stay patrolling Skid Row and downtown unless it was specifically to brutalize people because he knows that that's his, his job under this citizen's oversight board? We haven't heard much about what appeared to be, speaking of Skid Row, a serial killer walking up and down 6th Street a couple of weeks ago, shooting people in the head. A couple were in the middle of the day. Police were right there. And while I don't, I wouldn't advocate for someone being, you know, brutalized by the police. It's interesting that a white guy, that did. Thank you. Next, we have Steve Riley. <clears throat> Sir, your three minutes has expired. Sir, your three minutes has expired. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. May what I items speak? would you like to speak on? All items, please. Okay, three minutes. The United States is a constitutional republic, and all lives matter. Tomorrow is National Police Memorial Day. Thank you, Phil Tabby, for his remarks and for acknowledging it. Unfortunately, it was not acknowledged, Police Week or National Police Memorial Day, by the chief of police or by the police commission. What does that say? I posted a remark in public comment. I hope everyone here takes the moment to read it. I also hope you take the time to go to the section, your LAPD, and go to the section and tucked away in the lower right-hand corner, officers killed in the line of duty. They deserve to be remembered and honored. And now I honor them by saying a prayer, the prayer of St. Michael, the patron saint of police officers. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope that you say a prayer for the fallen officers. Remember their families. They made the ultimate sacrifice. They deserve to be remembered and honored. And you not doing it at this meeting or on the LAPDonline.org website is a disgrace. Where are the ceremonies? Where is the remembrance? There should at least be a badge on the website with a black mourning band across it. For tomorrow, for the week, for the month, now, getting to the chief's report also, it's very formulaic, okay? Whoever's writing that script needs to get, you need to get off the script. You need to lead, to listen and to lead. Restore the blue line flag to the police stations wherever the officers decide they want to see it. They deserve that. That would change morale. Another thing that would change morale, if you would enforce the law at these meetings, 403 PC, disturbing a public meeting. How many times do we have to see a recess over the years 
because you can't maintain order, an arrest is not made. You have a chief of police, a sergeant at arms, make the arrest. There has to be a consequence. It starts with you. It starts with you, enforcement of the law. Now, should there be a task force on the MTA? Yes, there should be. That was a good point, President Southers. Let's make people feel safe. Also, this is Military Appreciation Month. Thank you for all who served in the military who defend our nation. To the police, I thank them, and to the military. God. The next speaker, Becky. masturbating in front of me and I came in to make a complaint because the officers would not take a complaint on site. Um, this is the, this is when he came in here following me, following me. And guess what the officer Contreras, batch number 39037 said, you need to quiet down or else you need to step outside. Do you hear this? And then he tells me to step outside if I'm gonna be any louder. No, no, no one came to my rescue. No one came to my rescue. The next day, I don't know by who, whether sent by him or not sent by him, I get attacked at Costco from behind. Socked, socked, came at me. That's when I did this. Yes. And what I'm trying to say to you, um, Mr. Choi, is, and by the way, this is my first time here, so I apologize if I don't know how to do this. First time, first time. Um, Officer Contreras not only refused to take down a report, the known offender has a long criminal history, a felon that was released just on May the 2nd, May 5th was the incident. I'm a harm reduction specialist. I go out and I serve my community. I go out and I feed my community not just the unhoused, we're talking about whoever needs it. I go out and I provide services. And when I called LAPD on this man, cause he was brandishing nice, a big machete, they refused to do anything. And then he went in there and now I'm gonna get dirty and I'm gonna get nasty and I apologize for this. He went into the bushes, defecated, looked me straight in the eye cause I called LAPD and masturbate it, masturbate it. We called again, three and a half hours later, nothing, nothing. I tried to make a report the next day. I tried to do a PPA, APA, LMLP, whatever it's called. I tried it, it didn't work. I came here again, Officer Contreras told me, yeah, we don't take reports here, but aren't you an officer? Refused to walk me to my car. Refused to walk me to my car. A victim of sexual assault, and he refuses. Ma'am, this detective right behind you will take your report and talk to you about the incident. The report was actually already taken because two sheriff officers walked me, and that's why it was taken. But I will follow up with you. Thank you very much. Next, we have T. Hello. Hi, what items would you like to speak on? All of them, please. Okay, three minutes. Well, where do you start? Okay, well, the LAPD gets $3.4 billion a year. Every agenda item this week, you're getting further donations from 
everything to surveillance to a choir, which seems a bit uh, hypocritical. Um, so you have all the funding you need. You take up, you know, half more than half of the city's um, general fund. And yet we have a lot of instability. Um, now, you, you don't prevent crime. People are getting shanked, stabbed, shot, some by you um, and some by people that randomly are out there, you know, and some of them need help. Part of the issue is your, your budget is taking up the funds that are needed for mental health care, right? So we see we have an enormous problem with mental health in the city. Um, people shouldn't be shot by the police or killed by the police because they have mental health issues. However, they should be provided services, right? And so instead of eating up all that fun, we need to divert some of that money to mental health services and housing because if people are cared for and have the service they need, maybe all this wouldn't be happening, but you eat up the entire fund, right? Um, in addition, you know, you don't prevent anything from happening. Um, has, has school, has, has police ever stopped a school shooting? No. Um, however, you're able to go in with force to college campuses, um, to students that are peaceful pro protesting and exercising their first amendment right to quell that with force. You can't prevent crime, but you can go in to college campuses, um, youth that are protesting a genocide is happening um, but you have all the funds, you have all the brute force, you have all the weaponry to go against unarmed students. Um, and then you allow on KTL live, KTL LA live broadcast, a group of grown white supremacist men attacking students for over three hours and there's no police to be found. Yet the next day you can manage to get up CHP, um, LAPD, and the Sheriff Department to go in and forcefully... The next speaker, Matios Kijan. My name is Matios Kijan with the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. Um, yeah, just wanted to name, because it hadn't been named, that uh, LAPD detained an 83-year-old grandmother on Mother's Day for selling flowers without a permit. And so that's what these, uh, this department's resources are going to, criminalizing street vendors and poor folk uh, on Mother's Day. And we saw the same type of brutalization against student pro protesters we've seen kind of consistently on Sunday as well outside the Shrine Auditorium, where graduates and students who were protesting in support of Palestinians were shoved and thrown to the ground by LAPD officers um, and even wrongfully told that picketing was illegal when the sergeant in charge was asked uh, what crime they were breaking. He couldn't cite one because they were just making it up as it goes as they go and sanitizing this violence. Uh, I wanted to use my time today to kind of further reinforce or I, I guess substantiate even more um, some of the statements we made about Errol Southers last week, especially around his advocacy for racial profiling. You're going to want to let out that sigh. It's going to be kind of long. And so when, when I say that, you know, Errol Southers is an advocate for profiling, it, it, this isn't hyperbole. I have some direct quotes from uh, an article he wrote in 2011 called America is not Israel, but that's the name of the article. And so, um, Errol Southers here says, despite differences in size and scope, the state of Israel does one thing better than most. It prioritizes the, quote unquote, the human element on both sides of the counterterrorism equation. America has crossed the threshold when the mere mention of the, quote unquote, P word, in parentheses, profiling in the English lexicon invokes images of shredding the Constitution, in, effectively in defense of the word profiling. And then we have a follow-up quote here. The fact is, behavior-based information obtained by Ben 
Gurian airport security personnel, which is indicative of inconsistencies or evasion, does not put security and civil liberties at odds, nor should it in the United States. So when we think about the state of Israel and their practice of profiling, Southers is framing this as something sophisticated, something to be emulated in some ways. That's widely shit on in this country. We know behavioral surveillance is a proxy for racial profiling. And when we think about the language associated with who's being profiled in the state of Israel, we now see the Prime Minister of Israel referring to Palestinians as human animals, referring to Palestinians as quote unquote, children of darkness, very clear racialized dehumanizing language. That has been the outcome of behavioral surveillance in this country and in any settler colonial project um, as it's existed. And when we think about how behavioral profiling has manifested itself here, it's been in that same racist criminalization, but it's also deputized community members to commit pretty egregious acts of violence. I think about specifically post-October 7th, the stabbing of six-year-old Wadia al fiyum in Chicago, who, uh, you know, uh, whose stabber was responding to a call to be vigilant for Hamas copycat attacks here in the United States. And so when they were seeking out that behavior, that inherent criminality, they stabbed a six-year-old boy. Errol Southern. Thank you. The next speaker, Hamid Khan. So Mark Smith made an exit. Uh, we just sent him an email this morning. We didn't know that uh, he was here last week. And we were supposed to receive the SAR audit, talk about behavioral surveillance. Mark Smith last emailed us to the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition on January 10th of this year, saying that the SAR audit, which is behind four years, where the department and the Inspector General is mandated to give an audit on an annual basis, it's behind now four years, and he sent us an email that we will have the audit within 90 days. Well, fuck, it's been like over four months now, and we're still waiting on the audit for 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So we don't know who and how and when and who's responsible for that? And that's the level of incompetency that we see on an everyday basis when it comes to California Public Records Act request. We have requests that are still outstanding since 2020, and every time we get this whole routine, we've been suing the LAPD and we have won every freaking lawsuit. We've sued the LAPD 10 times, but they still keep on doing that. Which brings me to the topic that Michelle was talking about that haven't not learned the lesson. I think the issue is that that is the lesson. That is the lesson. To expect otherwise is just really naive because these are violence workers. This is not about public safety. It's about, it's about unleashing violence on the community. So that's how it's going to happen. And when we talk about that they call them, well, Errol Southers is the they, and Errol Southers is also the them as a VP, as a senior VP at USC, and that's exactly when the LAPD programs like uh, TVTP, Targeted Violence and Terrorism Prevention, or PATH, Providing Alternatives to Hinder Extremism, it's not just it's only out on the streets, it's on college students, it's on high school students, now with that LASAR app as well. So it is not that we can separate them there is no, there is no freaking thin blue line or any of that bullshit there because he is that thin blue line. And that's how he, he, he exercises violence. And the other thing I also want to say is that, you know, just lessons they have not learned, which I also thought of programs like predictive policing and the use of algorithm. Rasha Shields, do you know uh, Jeff Ranthingham? He's the professor of anthropology that created Predpol. So this is a quote from him in 2010 about predictive policing. And he's, he's an anthropologist. The behaviors that a hunter-gatherer uses to choose a wildebeest versus a gazelle are the same calculations a criminal uses to choose a Honda and a Lexus versus a Lexus. That's the science that is within these algorithmic-driven policing and data-driven policing. Same thing about Palantir, and now you have Peregrine. Palantir and Predpol were roundly discredited, and we, we did win when the predictive policing program. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the last speaker. The last speaker is Donald Hardin. Hi, I'm Donald Harlan. Uh, I'd like to speak on uh, pure agenda items and general comment. Uh, I would start with uh, example agenda item 3B, 
the department report, uh, uh, the different stuff donated to the police department. Uh, that's really nice. We're not talking about significant amounts, but really I'd look at the people giving donations to you guys. Uh, if they're involved in any real estate deals or what's the source of their income? Uh, seems that there's a lot of corruption going on, uh, especially here in the police commission. Uh, you see that uh, so many, this is like a uh, carousel ride with all unicorns in this police commission. Uh, one guy after another shows up over here and rips the city off and develops a billion dollars of real estate and says, well, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to run away now. You know, guy after guy, it's like a amusement park carousel ride over here, you know. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the colleges. Uh, you know, the USC and UCLA are, are my properties. Uh, they're my institutions. And I actually have several institutions all across the nation that way. You'd be surprised. Uh, you may have actually received a degree from one of the colleges I own. And you realize that one day when I break free, I'm going to shit can all your degrees you got in that college, all the work you did. And everybody's going to lose everything over there. You're going to lose your ass when I break free and cancel all those degrees you handed out at those colleges. I'm not just talking USC. Uh, especially uh, if you got your degree after 1978, then yeah, you're, you're vulnerable to that. You may find that the people you're working with suddenly will all turn against you or change against you and say, oh, Donald just walked up and he's gonna ruin all our degrees. Well, anyways, uh, I, have to, I have to do colleges. You guys must realize that by now. There's quite a bit. Not just USC. Uh, I was also going to look at, uh, talk about the building down across from uh, Staples Center, the uh, 1150 South Figueroa Street. It seems that the people involved over there and illegally developing the Chinese property, that they used it as a source for building materials to illegally develop all over the city and that uh, I don't know who made the deal there. It wasn't ever, the people that own the property there aren't oceanwide, they're not ever grand. They're not any of those people that say that own it. Nobody should be making deals for them. Thank you. We'll now move on to item number three, consent agenda items. Are there any comments or questions on agenda items 3A, B, or C? I have a question, did you guys read about the donation? I move that we approve, recommend, uh, we take the recommendation for board action. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. The commission will now recess into closed session. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item numbers 4A, B, and C in accordance to Government Code 54957. Good afternoon. The commission has concluded closed session. We'll have a report out by the executive director, Mrs. Sibley. For uh, item 4A1, officer involved shooting 028-23 um, at the regular board, at the regular meeting of the board of police commissioners on May 14, 2024, during the closed session, the board made the following findings by a 4-0 vote. Uh, for tactics, tactical debrief, two police officers three and one police officer two for drawing an exhibition of a firearm in policy no further action two police officers three and one police officer two and for lethal use of force in policy no further action one police officer three and one police officer two for item 4b1 the item was discussed and for item 4c1 the item was discussed Thank you. With that, I'll make a motion to, for the meeting to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.